Hey everyone, Team UDF here for the ZQuest the Guide slash tutorial slash chicken pot pie. Today, we're ready to wrap up the first dungeon. And the only one I'm really kind of planning on doing, but if you guys continue to ask questions, I will be making more. So it is finally time. Let's put in the boss door. It looks so cool and everything. We're in room 76 here. And I know what I want to put in here now. We're going to go ahead and start making random block designs. Uh, yeah, we'll do stuff like this. And there we go. Looks pretty good. And what we're going to have in here are wall masters. Yeah. We're going to see if we can bounce the player back to start before they fight the boss. Uh-oh. Deviousness. No, that's okay, though. And you could give a reward in here if you want for defeating all the wall masters. Like, you could give 20 rupees or... Oh, sorry about that or something. You could give a potion if you want. Maybe just a blue potion. You could give bombs. I'm going to give bombs. And you'll probably know why I'm giving bombs when we get to the boss room. And now we're in the boss room. Screen 66. That was that. So, yeah. Okay, so, we do want a shutter. You can use a one-way shutter if you don't want the player going back through the dungeon after the boss is finished. But I'm just going to put in a shutter for the sake of it. And I'm going to put a shutter in on the right. Don't want anything anywhere else because the Triforce room is going to be over here in 67. So the boss we're going to have... It's going to be Aquamantis. However, there's going to be a couple of twists. First of all, there are two types of Aquamantis here. Aquamantis, I guess. I don't know. I just call them Aquamantis. Doesn't matter. Screw you! Okay. So the Aquamantis facing left means that it's actually going to be on the right side of the room because it's facing left. And they predetermine where these most of these boss monsters appear if they're not free roaming. So the Aquamantis, if we have it facing the right, it will appear on the left side of the room. We want the one that's going to be facing left, so let's put it in there. You can have two Aquamentis in the same room if you want. You can have any number of bosses in the same room if you want, up to the number of enemies you can have in the room, of course. But the Aquamentis structure is usually like there are five, five here and five here, so why have I skipped out on those? Because our Aquamentis is going to be hiding on an island. Kind of. The only problem is we have to give Link enough room to actually walk into the boss room. Which makes this seem kind of awkwardly put together, but we could just match it up. You could match it up like that if you want to. Or you could have a small, like, stepladder puzzle before getting to the Aquamentis. So maybe you don't let Link go this way at all. But he'd have to step over here, then step over here. You know, any way you want it. I think this is enough room to fight an Aquamentus. I don't remember for sure. Let's go ahead and be symmetrical here. Kind of. Now it's kind of symmetrical. This part doesn't make sense, but you know. Well, now it does. So there you go. Boss room. That's all you need. Of course, if you want to go in traditional Legend of Zelda fashion, when you defeat the boss... You get a heart container. Yeah, not a heart. Whoops, what am I? Not a heart, that literally just means heart. No, we want heart container. Alright, so let's go ahead. Enemy implies item. The shutter doors will automatically close and open once the Aquamensis is defeated. And there is one other thing you want to check in this room. And it's an enemy flag. It's the dungeon boss. And the reason we're going to check this flag is because a couple things happen with this flag, uh with his flag checked. First of all, the enemies in this room should not return once they're defeated if they're triggered as the boss or the, the dungeon boss. The second thing this does is it stops the the boss sound effects, if I can ever find them again. Here we go. The boss roar sound effects, which we are going to put in here and in 76 and in 56. Now you don't have to do this, but generally if you're building an NES style quest, in the NES, all rooms adjacent to the, the boss room had a roar sound effect in it, and send sound effect in it. And so I guess in that regard our feed the Goria room would also have a 
boss roar sound effect. And there you go. The only thing left for us to do is to build the Triforced Room. And typically, the Triforced Room is a one-way shutter. So I'm going to go ahead and put a one-way shutter here. I'm also going to put a staircase in the corner here, though, and I'll explain why in a bit. But first, let's go ahead and design our Triforced Room however we want. So that looks good. I kind of unintentionally did that, but I'll go with it. Uh, no, that's not what I want. See, now I'm trying to make it all freaking... You know, symmetrical and, and whatnot. Okay, there we go. That's better. You can design things like these any way you want. Maybe you want some uh, statues in here to make it a little more lively. Are there fire tiles in this tile set? I don't remember. I don't think there are. No, but then you could put, like, you know, different kind of tiles here, or you could... Make the path a little fancier if you want. Really, it's up to you. The main point is that we're going to have an item in here, and it's going to be a Triforce Fragment. Now, you can have a whole Triforce in here, but that's literally like for the Ganon fight. So Triforce Fragments is more what we want in, in traditional NES, uh, NES fashion here. So there we go. There's our Triforce piece. Uh, there's a bit... I don't know. I don't like too much open room in my Triforce rooms, but again, you know... However you guys want it. I guess I'll throw some of these here. I don't know what these are supposed to be. Like, I guess they're just there to be fancy. Let's go ahead and use some of our fancier things. Fancy. Okay, now we need to go back to map 1 because we need to remember where the heck we've been this whole time. We've been in map 1, screen 47. So when you pick up the Triforce, you want a tile warp out of this room. And you want an instant warp with zap effects. So you're going to have that whole Triforce cutscene thing. And it's, we're going to be taking it to the overworld, screen 47. However, though, we're not actually done in here. There is one other thing you want to add, just in case. And it's a side warp to the same screen. Okay, so you want your side warp to actually be an entrance exit. Which makes sense, I don't know. I always forget about these things. Okay, though. That's why you want to get one dungeon complete and correct, so that you can always go back and look at what the heck you did. So, you know, yeah. Okay, so we've got our wall master room in the last ditch effort to get rid of Link. We've got our Aquamentus boss battle in the heart container waiting up here. You could put the heart container over here, but sometimes you'll get players who want to do three heart challenges in your quest. So most of the time, I'll try to be a little friendly in that regard and throw the heart container somewhere where the player isn't likely to be standing when the battle's over. So in case they don't want to pick it up, they won't. And then, of course, we got the Triforce Room. It'll play the fancy music, and it'll warp us out. Now, the staircase is because this is a one-way shutter. If Link comes in here and he's already taken the Triforce, you just want your player to have a way out. So go ahead and make use of the staircase for that purpose. And with that in mind, that is about it for our level one. We've gone from start to finish. Really, what we could do now is we can just make it look a little fancy or make it look a little better, add some more decorations in certain places. Maybe we take the sand and throw some sand in a bit of the, the water rooms. Let's find a better water room. Like, we've got some sand here, maybe. Just kind of make the dungeon look a little more alive. This is completely optional, dependent on what you want to do with your game. Let's see, does this look good? I don't know. Eh, I, don't like, I don't like how that looks. I don't know, it might look okay, but... I'm not really buying it. <laughs> over here, over here. I don't know. I guess I don't need it that many more places. You can throw more blocks around where you think there's some barren room. Something like that. Ah, uh, yeah. This room's kind of uh, dull, isn't it? Let's see, are these slow walkers are just... Yeah, it is slow walk. Well, we could have some slow walk in here. Why not? Kind of mess with the player a bit. Give them some kind of icy things. Probably don't need anything else, really. And I think that would do it. We've got our first complete level. 
it's somewhat boring and bland, but we've got some interesting puzzles in it and a lot of different things to show off. You'll notice we actually didn't use many small keys at all. I think two, yeah, two. Two small keys. That's not a lot at all, but, you know, we've got other requirements for getting through the dungeon and everything. We've got some roundabout path that kind of opens up. In traditional Zelda fashion, it opens up a shortcut once Link gets the item. So in case he has to come back here, you know, he doesn't have to go all the way around 72, 56, 55, 54. He can just come back in through 64 and go straight down to 74. So now, I guess what we can do is finish the D-map because we've got a, one thing that I do want to do, and it's the music. Now, I'm all for NES Legend of Zelda music and everything, but I have not done a proper tutorial on how you can add your own music in this game. I do not believe I have anyway. So, go to Quest. Go to Midis. We're going to have a bunch of empty spots here. And this is why I have fraps running at the same time, because we're now we're going to add our own custom music. So double-click on one of these and go to Load. So go to your directory with wherever the music's at and load one. Load a MIDI up or something. And then make sure it's a MIDI, especially in these older versions of Zelda Classic. Okay, so I'm going to pick that one. So, let's hear it for a bit. If it'll play, I don't know if it will. Because I've got something going on in the background. And... I just don't think that music works for me on Zelda, on ZQuest anymore. I can't get it to play for some reason. So maybe I can't show this off. But wait, it has to work because I've got to be able to add music to my freaking game. So why isn't this working? Does, does, does the vo you know, the volume is fine. Ah, oh, I have to load it again. Okay. Does the Lost Woods theme work? It, oh, you know what? I remember what I did. Hold on. This isn't... Yeah, I, I muted ZQuest a while ago for some reason. There we go. Okay. That <laughs> would be why it's not working. Alright, fantastic. Okay, now we can do this for real. So, Minis, let's select our custom track here, Thanatos, and let's hear it for a bit. Kind of some nifty music. I was, I went around and I checked for something that could look, or sound good for this first level. So you can set your volume and everything, and I think it's going to have to be much higher. Even though it's pretty loud for me right now, but I'm trying to remember. Well, my, my voice is on a different track than this, so if it's too loud, I can always just boost that, so let's up that. Okay, now. What you want to do in here, though, is you can't actually just... Well, you could you could technically just throw the music in here and have it be done with it, but, you, you know, it's a MIDI, so it can loop and everything. You want it to loop in your game, perhaps. So, if we play this, you want to look for the point where it starts to loop, so you can put that in your loop start. So, let's go all the way to the end here. So let's listen for a bit. Uh, that'll, that'll do us. Or no, it won't. Too far. We need a different, we need a better loop point than that. You're gonna have to play around with this a bit for each track you try. Give it, go ahead and give it a shot. Ah, uh, shut up, timer. Really though? Oh man, okay. Okay, so you probably want to end it on 389. Because it starts to fade out here, so you want to find that point in the song where it uh, where it begins where it begins again. So let's go ahead and listen up for that. It's going to be coming up here soon, I believe. Nope. This should have it. Okay. So let's make sure we pay attention to what number it's on. Yeah, I think it was 69. <laughs> Okay, so, when you got your loops in there, go ahead and, and stop. You can start the music wherever you want. You can start it on zero, you can start it on 69. It doesn't matter, but the loop will happen with this. So let's go ahead and test the loop. Let's see if, let's see if it matches up. And there you go. It sounds virtually flawless. 
So that is how that works. And now I'm going to make sure I save right when I get out of here because I know this version of ZQuest doesn't like when I change the music sometimes. Okay, so let's go to the D-Map, level 1. We're going to select that track, Thanatos, for our dungeon music. And next time, we are actually going to go into Zelda Classic. I'm going to test the whole dungeon, and we're going to fix any problems we see along the way. So ZQuest will be in the background. I'm going to have the, the whole window over a window thing going on, so don't freak out. But we've got to do it for great justice. Oh, that's such an old joke. Don't even use that. Okay. So next time, we're going to be right in here. Thanks to everybody for watching. I will see you next time for more ZQuest Guide slash tutorial. Ask questions if you got them.